In this episode, we're going to unbox the Estes Space Core Vesta Intruder Model Rocket Kit. There are many unboxing videos for model rockets, but wouldn't you like a real rocket scientist's opinion of the materials and parts in the kit? Today, you'll actually find out the inside information so that you know what to look for when you get a rocket kit. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan, and yes, I am a rocket scientist. Today we're going to unbox this Space Core Vesta Intruder Kit, and we're going to look at it from the perspective of an engineer to see what's good, what we might change, those kinds of things. Um, I've already opened the bottom of the box so that we can drop it out. Uh, you can see it's got this beautiful colored box. Now the Vesta is a fictitious alien spacecraft that if you read the history of it on the back and it showed up somewhere around Jupiter in the solar system far into the future and then it disappeared and then it came back and the story behind it is why did it come back it's a very cool story um, so that's what the box looks like um, as you can see when you open it up the big thing that you notice is this big blow molded nose cone this is polystyrene plastic, which I like because it's really easy to paint. Um, if I'm, I'm looking on here and it's kind of like going to be painted gray with black and a black ridge along the middle and then these decals and we'll take a look at the details here in a minute. Um, Estes did a really nice job on the engine or the shock cord anchor here on the nose cone. I like this one better than some of their other ones um, just to make it easier to tie. Sometimes when you're when you tie it, um, it's the shock cord wants to come up the side and then it, it's harder to put in. But it looks like this one is deeper, so there's more room to get everything inside. And you can see that it fits on the nose cone really nice. And I like that fit. It's a nice fit. It's not going to come out on you. Um, this is a fairly short tube, so... Um, even though it's a little snug and it's probably because there's a burr on here uh, where the paper is kind of, when they cut it, it kind of goes in a little bit. Yeah, that's what, you know, that's a beautiful fit. Um, this tube looks to about 12 inches long. This is BT60, so it's 1.6 inches in diameter. Uh, so that's nice. Um, let's just open up the bag of all the little parts. And see what's inside of here. All right, so the first thing that I see is two sheets, oh, three sheets, four sheets, four sheets of lightweight cardboard. Um, these are for the fins, and we'll talk about that in just a second. These are laser cut, so they'll just pop right out of here real easy. These are centering rings for the back of the rocket. Um, also some uh, decorative parts, and I bet you that's on the rear of the rocket. This is this back centering ring. And I can tell that this is the back centering ring because it's got this notch right there. Um, that's for the engine hook that comes with the kit. Um, so that's just cardboard. Um, looks pretty good. It's cut all the way through. I like it. Um, okay, so here's the balsa fins, and these are 3 16 inch thick. Um, these are the fins. There's one, two, three, four, five, six of them. That's a lot of fins, which is really good. It's going to make a very stable rocket. And then all these other pieces here are more decorative um, to give the rocket that nice cool shape. And then these little pieces right here, I'm guessing that these are... Uh, yeah, I'm not guessing anymore. These are standoffs for the launch lug. And you're going to need standoffs right there because if you put a, a regular launch lug here, um, because the nose cone is flared out and big, it would interfere with the nose. So Estes has you put the launch lugs on standoffs. So I can tell that just from my engineering perspective there. Um, the thing about these fins is because they're, they're so narrow right here, they are more prone to be breaking. Um, and that's why... Estes gives you these uh, pattern sheets right here. 
Um, and these are going to make the wood so you can't snap the wood so easily. So that makes the wood a lot stronger. So make sure when you're building the rocket to put these on the fins. Um, and there should be um, 12 of them. Yeah, there's, there's one for each side of the fin. And they're going to have um, some... These parts right here are more decorative just to give it some texture of the rocket. So it makes it, you know, more eye appealing when, when people look at it. Also in the kit, we have the instruction sheet. And I'm looking at the this, this kit and Estes labels this one as being advanced. Um, so that's kind of like a skill level three. So it's not too hard to build but it's certainly a little bit more challenging than a beginner kit. And with all these parts right here, I can see why. Um, you have to glue those on and you know you have to follow instructions. Um, a lot of people like to modify their kits. So when you modify this one, or if you do, don't forget to put these on. This is very critical. Um, inside of here, there's the instruction sheets and you can see this right here is an alignment guide for the fins to make sure that all the fins are coming off at the correct angle. With six fins, yeah, that's gonna be hard. That's a lot of gluing involved. Uh, let's see, let's, anything that stands out um, inside of here. This right here is the shock cord anchor. And then right here is the marking template for putting all those fins on. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's a lot of little parts to this rocket. Uh, but the instructions look good, lots of pictures, so you'll understand it pretty easy. Estes really does a good job with that. Uh, this right here is the decal sheet, and this is just a protective covering so that these don't get scratched up in transit. You can see, uh, I do like them. They, they match the, the cover box art really good. So what's shown on the box is what you get when you open it up. And these are water slides, so you'll cut them out and then slide them on the rocket. Um, yeah, I, I do like them. They look pretty good. So let me put that back on there. This is the engine mount, and this is a big one. So this is 24 millimeters in diameter, so it's about one inch big. So this is going to take 24 millimeter diameter engines, um, and that's going to be your C11, D12, E12, and then all kinds of Aerotech and Cesaroni motors as well. So don't think that you can just fly it with the motors that are listed on the box. There's a lot more that you can fly with. Uh, one of the things that I would recommend is go to the Apogee website. And on our, on our website, we have the RockSim file for this rocket. And what that allows you to do is you can load that up into the launch visualizer. And you can actually find the launch visualizer on the Vesta page, and it will put the rocket anywhere on the world in a 3D scene. So it's kind of like a virtual reality simulator where you can see the rocket taking off with any rocket motor. So you can test out all those different motors to see if it's going to stay within the bounds of your launch area. So I would recommend doing that. Um, so into this bag, this is all of our little parts. Let's see what we got in here. Um, this right here is the engine hook. <laughs> and then this ring right here is what holds the engine hook onto the engine mount tube. So that kind of holds it and locks it in place so that it can't flip up and off. Um, we have some clay and I'm pretty sure that's gonna be for nose weight inside the rocket. And so that's gonna be rolled up and then dropped into the nose cone so that you have enough nose weight to make sure that the rocket is stable. If they provide nose weight, put it all in. Um, again, that modification, don't leave it out because they've flown it with this nose weight to make sure that it's stable. Um, inside of here, we have the rubber shock cord. Um, now, the thing about rubber is over time, like, you know, like one year out in the future, you want to test it by pulling on it like this to make sure that the rubber hasn't degraded. This is actual rubber, so it will deteriorate over time. You know how, how rubber gets kind of brittle. Um, you just want to make sure that it, it, it's still nice and pliable. 
um, so that your nose cone doesn't come flying off your rocket because then it gets harder to find. Um, this is the launch lug, and then as I said before, you're gonna you're gonna actually, I can see from here, we have two standoffs, but one launch lug, so that tells me we're gonna cut that in half. So you're gonna need a like a razor blade or a hobby knife to cut that in half, uh, and then. We have the warranty card, and this gives you the Estes warranty, and it also has launch site dimensions, but as I mentioned, go use the launch visualizer at the Apogee website, apogeerockets.com, uh, to see this rocket on your field so you know what it's gonna look like when you launch it. Um, and here we also have an engine block um, that prevents the engine from flying up through the middle. And then the final piece is our parachute. And let me open that up and see how big it is. So you can see it's nice and colorful. And you can see that the suspension lines are already pre-attached, so you don't have to tie any knots on the parachute. And when we open this up, this kind of looks like it'd be about a 15-inch parachute. Yeah, 15-inch diameter parachute colorful so you can find it as the rocket is descending down to the ground. So that is the Vesta Intruder from Estes Industries, but you'll find it here at Apogee Rockets. Um, and then you'll get all kinds of information about this rocket kit as well on our page, even more than this video. Um, you know, all the building supplies you're going to need, um, you know, the recommended motors, you can test fly it in the launch visualizer. So Estes, um, so you'll find that Estes rocket here at Apogee Components. Our web address is www.apogeerockets.com. And thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.